It seems pretty simple, right? You drag your footage into Resolve, you hit the Stabilize button, job done. Wrong. That's not exactly how it happens. So, in today's video, I have lined up two clips and we're gonna stabilize them each three ways so there will be plenty of examples so you will be able to see exactly what the different stabilization modes and settings do. So welcome back to Creator Reality, my friend. We're taking a look at DaVinci Resolve's stabilization and these examples also show two different stabilized modes for the Nikon Z30 that you probably have available in your cameras. We've got electronic stabilization and optical stabilization. Yeah, almost didn't think of the word there. Anyway, let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. Here you can see I've got two clips and I've got four copies of each, unstabilized and then three different stabilization modes. So let's dive into the stabilization part of the inspector. If you don't see it, it's right here. Click on inspector. If it just says stabilization like that, you just need to click here or on the text and it will expand and collapse it. You can turn the effect on and off by clicking the red button or gray button when it is off. And you'll notice nothing's happening here. If we go to a stabilized clip and we click on stabilization, you can see the crop. But going back here, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go through this control first. So we have stabilization, we have a reset button. You're gonna need that. The stabilize button will apply the stabilization with the settings you selected. Mode, there are three modes. We'll go into those in a minute. You have a camera lock, zoom, cropping ratio, smooth, and strength. So these three modes, right? First one is perspective. It's trying to lock on to the camera's perspective and it's gonna do all of the most aggressive stabilization that it can. It's kind of a last resort or first resort, depends on the settings in your camera. I typically don't use stabilization on the Canon stuff. It's got IBIS. The Nikon Z30 there doesn't have IBIS. Next up is similarity. That's gonna do your panning, tilting, rotation, and zoom. So it's the second most aggressive stabilization mode. Depending on the stability or the stabilization mode in your camera that you selected, it could be good or really bad. We're gonna take a look at examples in a minute. The last one is translation. This is the least aggressive and probably the first one you wanna try because it does lead to the least amount of artifacting and wonkiness. It's basically gonna do pan and tilt and that's it. It doesn't worry about rotation. So let's get back in and look at the other settings on stabilization. In mode, you see the aforementioned perspective, similarity and translation modes. Camera lock is going to try to Pretend your camera was locked on, like if it was on a tripod. Zoom is going to actually do the zoom. I'll show that in a second too. Actually, we can click on this and we'll show it now. The zoom is right here. So if you look closely, you can see the checkerboard over here. This is off frame. This, uh, this footage when rendered will appear black, or if you have an underlying video track, you'll see that. So you generally wanna keep zoom selected. Camera lock, you only wanna select if you have a tripod. Cropping ratio is going to be how much of the image are you willing to lose? So if you're willing to lose a lot, you can drag it all the way to 250. We'll hit stabilize again. And it didn't really change much, did it? If we go double click on cropping ratio to reset it to 0.5, watch the crop here. It doesn't change. So what you know from that is that Resolve didn't have to crop anymore. If you have more movement or different kinds of movement, it may need to crop more or less. I like to play with this setting. Smooth is just gonna be how smooth are you trying to get your footage and strength is gonna be how much of this effect are you applying to your footage. So for me, I leave smooth and strength at default settings at all times. The only one I mess with is the crop factor. That's all you really need to touch. There you go, video over. No, I'm kidding, we haven't gotten to the examples yet. That's the good stuff, right? Like the video if you learned anything already. Maybe, I don't know, moving on. So for this first clip, we have the electronic VR turned off on the Nikon and the vibration reduction turned on. Vibration reduction is the optical stabe in that camera. So here is the clip before we did any stabilization. And as you can see, it's a little wonky. There's 
kind of a lot of a lot of movement there and i'm walking kind of heavy because that's how i go and we have a rotation halfway through so you get to see what it looks like straight out of the camera then we're going to jump into perspective this is going to be the best mode for this but watch what happens when i spin you get a jitter at the start and a jitter at the end if that is unacceptable we're going to want to look at some of the other modes but we didn't have a lot of wobble on that, so that's good. We're gonna jump into similarity, and you're gonna start seeing the wobble. Notice the corners, the corners are moving. It's not really killing off all the movement of the camera and smoothing it out. Also, we're getting a lot of jitters. So the next one we wanna try is translation, and you'll see that we have a little bit more wobbliness, but it's not quite as bad as similarity because it's not doing all the corrections and then we have very few jitters. Now, let's take a look at that second clip. You're gonna see a little bit of a difference and how the different stabilization modes apply to this footage. So here's our raw clip, and I've noted that the best one for this is translation because of the movement. This one has the electronic VR and the optical stave applied, and it's, it got a little bit wonky. So that's the raw footage right there. It's not all that bad, but it's not great. If we apply perspective to it, you'll see the first couple of jitters there, and then we've got some micro jitters when I'm walking. So it's picking up pretty good, but look at all the jitters there. Oh, that is just nasty. We don't want that. Yeah, tons of jitters. That's unacceptable, and that's on perspective. So we're gonna go over to similarity, and you're gonna see some real wonky stuff, trust me. Here we go, and whoa, it's doing all sorts of stuff. It's doing a zoom and moving around, and still we have some jitters, not as bad as perspective, but it's still quite a few. And again, it's not correcting for the heavy steps very well. I mean, nothing really is, but hey, we can try, right? I wasn't trying for the best footage there. Now we're looking at translation, and you can see that this is probably the most usable version of this because it's allowing that camera rotation as I walk, which doesn't make the corners wobbly. And there's no jitters. I mean, how cool is that, right? So now you see some examples, right? Let's go in and tinker with this a little bit. I wanna show you um, kinda how some of this works in some of my favorite settings. So we're gonna go back to my favorite clip here, the first one and we're gonna alt drag to make a duplicate down here where there's nothing overlaying it. And we're gonna click on it, make sure it's selected under stabilization. We're gonna hit reset. There shouldn't have been any anyway, but this just double make sure. And you know what, since we haven't done any state, let's hit camera lock and see what happens. This obviously is gonna depend on the speed of your computer, but whoa, look how much it cropped in. Now let's hit play. and it's actually not too terrible bad. Wait till I spin. Yep, we got a couple of jitters and quite a bit of crop. So let's make sure our clip is selected, uncheck camera lock, stabilize, same amount of crop. This is not bad actually. This is not the worst footage I've played with. We're gonna try perspective, but we're gonna drag this up to about 0.85. That tends to be enough to make a clip usable. So we're gonna click stabilize and it's done. And now that is a lot better than the raw footage. Still have a couple of jitters. And you can see how much of a crop we've got, about 12% or so. Let's bump this up to 0.95. So this is almost the least amount of cropping allowable, right? And you can see it, it cropped back out. So it shows more of our original image. And then we're gonna hit play. And you notice it's not doing as much. So this might not be as usable so we wanna go change this to similarity. We'll leave our cropping ratio, we'll hit stabilize. It only takes a couple of seconds and then we're ready to play. And you can see the image looks different. It's gonna be warpy, I bet. Yep, it's doing some warping stuff to it. Look at that. But if you're focused on the main subject, it's not all that bad. There's a little bit of jitters, not horrendous. Let's go try this with translation. We're gonna let that analyze, and then you can see the image moved again. So it's changing. 
And in this, you can really see how the image is affected by the different stabilization modes. Pretty cool, right? Now you can boop that like button. Maybe you'll subscribe and ask me a question in the comments below about something you want me to you know, show you in Resolve. So anyway, now that it's uh, now that I've shielded for myself, let's play it back. And you can see it's not doing a whole lot to the original clip, but it's sort of smoothed out a little bit. And then we don't have those jitters we were looking at earlier. So this really just kind of hammers home the point that I made earlier where trial and error is necessary here. But now we have a working knowledge of how stabilization modes work in Resolve. So you can generally guess based on the raw movement of the image in your video, which one to start with, which one's gonna give you the best result. Now, if we reset this and we just drag our smooth all the way up and we hit stabilize again, let's take a look at what that does. Look at the huge crop. So we're trying to make it super smooth, right? And it's gonna be super smooth, but look how much of that crop we've got. Look at this. I'm what, just a mouse cursor away from the top there. And then one, two, three to my chin from the bottom. And if we disable this, look how much we lose. We lose the whole word Harley there and a whole three mouse cursors up there. I mean, obviously scientific measurements here, but it's a ton of crop. So if you're finding that perspective works for you, but it's not quite good enough, you can drag the smoothness slider around and then you'll get a varying level of crop. And this is on top of our other cropping ratio. If we drag this down and we drag this all the way up and hit stabilize, man, we're really cropped in, but it's pretty smooth, right? You still get a little bit of wonkiness in the background and a couple of jitters, but it's super smooth. Now, mind you, this was taken on the Nikon Z30 with the 12 to 28 lens at 12 millimeter, which is a full frame equivalent of 18, I wanna say. Yeah, 1.5, so 18 millimeter. Now we're looking at more like a 35 millimeter or 40 millimeter focal length. Oh, that was a lot. But I hope you did learn something. If you did, boop the like button. Let me know in the comments below what you learned. Maybe something else you want to see me cover and resolve. And I hope you're having a great day. Until next time, go check out this video, which YouTube has curated just for you. And go out and be stable. I don't know. John out. <laughs>